How you doing, sculptors? Welcome back to the studio. Um, so, we're going to come back again for another 20 or 30 minutes or so of work on this guy. And um, remember a couple things I want you to keep in mind. Uh, work at eye level if you can. Um, just get some stuff underneath your piece, kind of stack it up, maybe your art bin or something like that. Um, or just kind of find a lower chair in the studio so that you can try to get... Um, Try to get this guy at about eye height. So, so many of the reference photographs and stuff that we have are shot from that level um, that it's really good for you to be able to see the contours, especially today because we're going to begin kind of talking a little bit more about um, paying close attention to the contour lines uh, that are going to um, define sort of the skin level information, the detail on the outside. Um, I've got my anatomical drawings out today. We're going to do a little drawing on that today to talk about leg tapers, and I've also got my um, my reference, my sculptural reference photographs, the Rodin sculpture, which is going to sort of help me with posing. Um, so a combination of looking at the anatomical drawings, looking at Rodin, and then also I've got some of the uh, Yenel Barce drawings, anatomical drawings that are really going to help us understand um, what's going on underneath the layers of skin. To, uh, to give it all of that detail information, right? The musculature, for example, or, um, or some of the bone work. Uh, and so I'm going to introduce that today. I've made some of those files available to you. Uh, you can also reference the text in the, uh, in the studio, in the classroom. Um, but uh, looking at, say, something, for example, uh, the specific file we'll take a look at today is the leg. I'm going to uh, mass in one of the legs in this tutorial, and then we'll spend a little time in the studio uh, doing more uh, of the appendages and sort of getting all the tapers correct. Uh, so first things first, let's actually um, do a little bit of drawing on the anatomical uh, on the anatomical reference. So I've already got one leg tapered off here, and I want to sort of um, draw your attention to a couple of specific things about sort of the naturalistic growth of um, you know of uh, human appendages and also a lot of other grown biological forms. Um, trees will work this way. A lot of animal limbs work this way. Uh, naturalism, represent naturalistic representation, um, really has a lot to do with getting these taper lines correct. And um, I want you to pay attention to and maybe include the glute or the buttocks here and kind of follow down to the knee and see this gradual taper that happens at the knee. And then we've got a little bit of a swollen sort of calf muscle, but then again another taper. So overall the whole leg tapers significantly uh, from the top of the glute down to the ankle. But then even in these smaller sections, uh, it does the same thing. Uh, I'll do the arm section here. I'm including uh, some of like the, the large attachment tissue here just so that um, I'm kind of keeping in mind that there's um, a, a lot of musculature that sort of pulls up through the leg and you know attaches in the glute or pulls up through the arm and attaches in the back. Uh, I would like to sort of have my, uh, my shoulder joints sort of all roughly in the same position as the front and the back, and so I'll lightly redraw my armature onto this piece so that I have, um, I have a similar sort of marking point, similar kind of uh, landmarks on the front and on the back. But what I'll do here is actually use a marker so that it shows up a bit easier in the video. And then I will separate the, uh, the upper arm from the forearm, and I'm going to include the sort of rounded off sort of um, the scapula or the back muscles, which would also be uh, sort of included in the pectoral muscles, and label in lay in the sort of tapering lines of the upper arm, and then lay in a similar line for the lower forearm. So it's really exaggerated in the upper arm, just like just like down here at the ankle. Look at the kind of compare the skinniness of the ankle to the thickness of the upper thigh or the glute, or the skinniness of the wrist to the upper uh, upper end of the shoulder. I'm going to sort of shade these in so that I have these as just sort of a visual reminder and maybe even a way to sort of take some initial measurements as I'm blocking in the form today. Let's get set up to do some sculpting. So I've got my anatomical reference here that's easy enough for me to just sort of reach over and 
do some uh, measuring and I've also got my sculptural reference images close by. I want to do my best to again work nice and high here that way I can more easily see some of my contours and I'm already seeing you know some potential issues here in the width of my waist and then definitely in the sort of thickness of the back compared to the waist I have a lot of ground to make up. Uh, I've, I'm starting to approach the correct thickness up toward the sort of top of the chest back but I've got some issues down here in the waist uh, so before I get you know too carried away and wanting to add a lot more to um, say the appendages I you know I might spend a little more time actually finishing the trunk and abdomen of this piece um, maybe starting to build out mass out the glutes a little bit but um, uh, I think for today's tutorial I'll actually start by adding in down here and then I'll have to go back and uh, backtrack and add more to some of these other limb areas because I'm going to first work on this sort of leg here, I'm going to open up the Yeno Barce uh, leg reference here so that I have a pretty good idea of where the muscle tissue is going to be kind of blending in from the sort of outer knee into the glutes and then wrapping down into the calf muscle. It's nice to be able to see some of those long lines. Um, I also need to come in here and uh, probably remove some of, the, uh, some of the windings down here toward the bottom. I'm not super concerned about, um, about the... Uh, the clay slipping off because um, this, it's going to be pretty well supported underneath and I'm concerned that that ankle joint is just going to have way too much wire down there so I'll remove some of the windings all the way back up to about the height of the calf that way I know I don't have any issue with thickness or with aluminum starting to poke out through uh, poke out through the actual clay sculpture since we're also going to start to kind of cover up this block with uh, or this sort of part of the armature with clay I want to make sure that if I need to take any specific measurements and then mark them off um, I can do that now like for example I really sort of want to locate that hip joint and so I'll probably start from the bottom and come up from the ankle uh, since now I have a little bit more complicated view of what's going on on the hip here I have a pretty good idea of the ankle marked uh, from before I have a pretty good knee referenced and I'll come up and tick mark that hip joint and then give that a mark across here that way I can sort of help guide the sort of adding and massing of clay along the top Now, if I were going to build this out uh, following the sort of s uh, specific anatomy that's uh, in Yano's drawings, um, I would probably do my best to build muscles from the inside out. We're not going to get quite so detailed here in these drawings. Uh, so these first pieces of clay are really just sort of foundational. This is sort of where I'm going to build up all the other girth or all the other thickness off of. Um, it's also the clay that is the closest sort of bite to the armature so make sure that that's got a nice snug nice tight fit and then as I add mass to this pay real close attention uh, generally let's see here I've probably got a little bit more mass uh, to the back leg and then uh, so this is from the glutes below I have a lot of mass back here uh, but then I also have quite a bit of mass that travels sort of from the top of the thigh up and is connecting uh, just below the belly so I want to make sure that I add uh, a good amount of muscle tissue up on that too and then eventually what ends up coming into focus is sort of um, uh, uh, the groin or the crotch of the sculpture which sort of has um, a little bit more defined valley to it. The goal by the end of this tutorial will be to not have all of the limbs completed but after probably 15 or 20 minutes have one leg completed with sort of some rough information that goes everywhere all the way down from hip to knee through the calf and into a, a foot built out that's sort of touching the ground so we'll get our we'll connect our torso up here to the ground by the end of today and then we'll have to come back in either future class studio times or future tutorials to um, to work on the arms
as I'm adding clay to the outside of this limb here, um, being careful to sort of add these long pieces of sort of skinny rolled out clay. And uh, this is doing a couple things for me. One, it's, it's helping me think about all the musculature that you can sort of pay attention to here in some of the anatomical drawings. Um, but it's also helping me tie different parts of the leg together. It's, it's really kind of um, easy for early sculptors to get um, overly obsessed about sort of specific parts or specific areas of a design and then kind of ignore the others. Um, the, you know, pulling in long pieces that sort of attach and pull through and connect different areas is just sort of like a, I don't know, it's almost like a ritual. It's, it's, it's a way just to kind of avoid the uh, sort of hyper focus. If I'm always blending from one area into the next, um, it's a way to, uh, to prevent that sort of mistake of uh, getting too obsessive about one spot on the sculpture. So I'm paying attention here to a taper that goes uh, from the hips down to the knee and the knee down to the ankle. And uh, the rough taper is there, but still looking a little bit silly here. I'm, I'm trying to make sure that I work in the round so that the taper is there from all dimensions. And then also paying close attention to the sort of mass that builds out on the inside of the leg. So he's finally grounded now. He's got uh, one foot planted on the ground. He's really starting to feel like gravity has some say, right, in, in what's happening to him. Up, up here, up top, he was really kind of just floating. Uh, now, uh, now that he's got that foot on the ground, he's very much connected. I have to be really mindful of how I might expect gravity to work on all that tissue and all these muscles. Uh, now is a really good time to sort of stop and look and see, like, does he, does he look like he could actually stand 
on that leg, you know, or does the armature need to be slightly bent? Um, it's not impossible to, uh, you know, to, to change the design or change the kind of bend of your armature at this point, but we don't want to get too much farther in, in the design uh, if, if he's starting to lean or tip. What I'm paying probably most careful, atten most careful attention to here in, in this uh, Rodin piece is uh, the line that's going to flow from the head through the glutes, down through that back leg, twisting and becoming sort of a vertical sort of plant here, right? This other leg is not carrying a whole lot of weight and so if my whole piece needs to be subtly shifted onto this leg a bit more, uh, getting the armature bent now at this stage isn't isn't too big of a deal. And pay attention from the front, from the back, from the side, from the three-quarter. Uh, you know, give it a good, good look over, make sure that it appears as though he could be standing. From here, I'll just be taking a lot more measurements and, uh, and kind of massing in as I go. I have a little bit more work to do on the torso uh, to sort of repair, but where I want you guys to get here by the end of this tutorial is, um, by the end of the studio session, I should say, is uh, see if you can't get at least one leg uh, planted, or if he's got a hand touching the ground. Uh, get one good kind of root, get one good sort of sculptural plant, uh, so that your uh, figure has a... Um, has sort of some connection to the sculpture block. From here, uh, we'll spend a couple days in studio, uh, adding in the other leg, and then massing in all of the muscle tissue uh, that sort of becomes uh, contour detail. As I'm paying attention to the contours here, uh, I'm talking about the sort of skin level uh, details. And so some areas are more resolved in this piece than others. Um, keeping track of my lines here so that I build mass evenly on either side uh, to maintain the sort of symmetry of the leg from each view. Uh, if you haven't gotten in the habit of sort of keeping track of where those lines are in your piece, I find that it's always a good idea at the end of every uh, sort of sculpting session to reestablish those lines, to sort of draw in the uh, sort of triangulations of some of those points to remeasure them off so that you start the next sculpture session uh, in a pretty confident place that you know where those uh, where those sort of landmarks are on the piece. Guys, I'm excited to see where you go with this piece and uh, excited to see how your, uh, how your armatures really start to flesh this out when you connect them to the block. I'll catch up to you guys in the studio.